as absolutely insane as it might sound, the title of this video isn't an exaggeration. Deep Rock Galactic literally tricks players into becoming a better version of themselves. Counter to most multiplayer games topping the charts at every turn, Deep Rock players are consistently some of the most wholesome people you can meet, and no matter where they are found in the deep recesses of the internet, they can't help but treat you as if you're one of their own. It's become so ridiculous that some people play for a hundred plus hours without coming across a single toxic player. People coming from certain fan bases experience a genuine culture shock when they pick up this game for the first time, and you can't exactly blame them for being suspicious. Entire analysis have been written on how in the world a small team of just 32 people have created a game that not only has a 97% positive rating on Steam, but seems to have the ability to rewire a person's brain. Let's examine how Deep Rock makes people so friendly, where other games go wrong, and whether some of this magic can be more commonplace in the multiplayer shooter genre as a whole. For those who might not have seen my other videos raving about this game, Deep Rock Galactic is a cooperative shooter in which you and a team of three other dwarves are tasked with descending into the depths of a bug-infested planet to mine the precious minerals within. Players are given the choice of four different classes, which they can swap between depending on the mission, all of which are distinctly useful. Already, we can list several reasons why toxicity would fail to germinate. As a cooperative game, players are already incentivized to work together, as everyone is united under a common goal. Secondly, the class system is so well designed that not only are all classes viable in all mission types, but their unique utility genuinely rewards a team, no matter what a person chooses. Furthermore, unlike other similar games, there are no limits to how many people can pick a particular class, meaning, if you only ever play a driller, no one will ever tell you to stop. The class system is also designed in such a way where everyone can mitigate huge weaknesses from each other. The scout can provide more light than his entire team put together, the gunner can save his whole squad with a single use of his bubble shield, and a single driller is so efficient when it comes to shaping the landscape, it's almost insane for anyone else to even try. Even with an impressive range of builds from within each class, they all specialize in a particular area, no matter what wacky upgrades a person decides to use. Another important distinction is that excluding a few endgame exceptions, all rewards are shared across all players in a mission, meaning even if you're not the person collecting all the shiny minerals, you still want to do everything in your power to help your new friend get rich. By the end game, the main reward for playing Deep Rock is the prestige of being a greybeard, meaning you know how missions work, have some seriously dripped out cosmetics, and take genuine joy in helping new players learn the game. Communication is also an underrated way in which the game pushes players to work together. Most of the in-game callouts are entirely automated, meaning anything from using a piece of equipment, taking friendly fire, or mining minerals, or have voice lines for doing so. Anything beyond this can usually be communicated through all players having a laser pointer, which as you probably guessed, also comes with a shit ton of in-game voice lines. The only time you ever need to type in-game is when discussing more complex strategies, but even then, most players can usually pick up what you're putting down. Keeping all of this in mind, Deep Rock Galactic also makes it particularly hard for griefers to thrive. Not only is your own success tied to that of the team, but kicking someone from your group is as simple as hitting a single button. Griefers have nothing to gain and everything to lose, so most of the time, they either end up quitting, or accept that it's more fun to become a hard-working dwarf for your team. Perhaps an underrated reason for this lack of toxicity also comes down to the strong culture that the game fosters. Each player is a blue-collar miner, working under higher management, and with no true ranks that give anyone power over another person, people tend to just respect one another by default. Whether it's saluting each other after taking down a tough enemy, greeting a newly dropped teammate, or just buying someone around at the bar, every interaction you have with another player is designed to be positive, letting you form a sense of immediate camaraderie with strangers you've never met. The only real form of seniority is when a new player recognizes that a grey beard knows their shit, but even then, it's more of a teaching experience than anything to do with ranks or titles. 
It also helps that this game is ridiculously generous when it comes to monetization, with all battle passes being 100% free, and everything not acquired in a battle pass immediately falling into the regular loot pool. On top of this, 95% of all cosmetics are earnable in-game, meaning if you see someone in some decked out gear, they almost certainly grinded for the drip. I'm not even a fan of most of the cosmetic DLCs, but when you can buy a game this good for $15 on sale, it feels insane to not find an excuse to give Ghost Ship more money when a game can legitimately make me feel as if I'm ripping off the developers, then it's hard to not pick this up without being in a fucking good mood. Whether this almost complete lack of toxicity can be replicated in other games is still up for debate. A big part of why Deep Rock has become this friendly in the first place is because it's seemingly designed around keeping players content with each other's company. For the sake of comparison, let's contrast this game to Valorant, which I would argue is on the complete opposite end of the shooter spectrum, making it a perfect foil to Deep Rock Galactic. Not only this, but it's also built quite a reputation for toxicity being part of the authentic Valorant experience, which makes this evaluation even more interesting. Valorant is highly competitive, meaning not only are new players seen as a liability, but because winning is much more heavily incentivized, their level of skill can be seen as a detriment to your own progression. Classes are also designed differently, as not only is it much harder to synergize between different abilities, but you can also lock a player out of playing their favorite character as soon as a match begins. Winning in Valorant is also the game's highest reward, and with such a transparent scoreboard, the game literally ranks players by how useful they are to the team. Monetization is also on the complete opposite end of the scales, meaning you as a consumer can either buy Deep Rock for you and your entire mining team, or you can buy a single weapon skin. I personally wouldn't blame anyone for being in a bad mood after spending that much money on a retextured gun. Another interesting observation is that in contrast to what we mentioned before, interactions between players in Valorant are mostly negative. Players can body block each other, blind their teammates, and get each other killed if they are not covering the right angle. On a more extreme end, you can even use your teammates as bait if you're so inclined, which isn't exactly an intuitive way to work as a team. Of course, the real question is whether a game like Valorant could become less toxic by similarly tricking players into becoming more friendly, or whether the fundamental design of each game is the reason for the level of toxicity. After all, Valorant can't lean into the benefit of having a shared goal, but I'd argue that it wouldn't take much tuning to reduce toxicity dramatically, and it wouldn't even need to alter the core experience. I'd argue that the main problem in terms of competitive shooters is not providing enough information for what your team has been doing. Most scoreboards will only include kills, deaths, and assists, but as we all know, these aren't always accurate metrics to measure overall impact. Opening a wall in Rainbow Six can allow the rest of your team to complete an objective. Mitigating damage in Overwatch can set your damage dealer up to pull off a game-winning play, and considering Valorant has so many ways that a person can inadvertently contribute to a kill, it seems insane to not lean into giving more positive feedback for you and the team. Another idea would be to decouple rewards from wins altogether and make all rewards strictly tied to personal performance. However, as previously mentioned, this would need to take place alongside a rework of its stats system, allowing players to be judged on their own merits. However, as hard as it is to admit, competitive shooters unfortunately seem to promote much more toxicity than more casual offerings, and while Deep Rock can be specifically designed to make all players happy, it's hard to imagine a way to keep a lobby of 10 people satisfied when 5 of them are always destined to lose. Perhaps a question we should have asked sooner is whether toxicity in a game like Valorant should even be considered a problem, but rather as simply part of the game. After all, people don't go surfing, expecting to not get wet, and I suspect most competitive shooter fans expect a certain level of toxicity as part of the authentic experience. 
players expect scorn from their teammates when they perform badly and should talk from their enemies when they perform well, and these instances only intensify the emotional investment for winning a match. With this in mind, if we can assume this is the case, it only serves to strengthen the mythic status of Deep Rock to more impressive heights. Unlike other unnamed development studios, Ghost Ship really makes a friendly experience the core of its DNA, and it creates a sense of camaraderie, rarely seen anywhere else in gaming. There's a special kind of magic to this dumb game about mining in space that truly brings out the best in people, and I really hope that more developers can replicate the both overlooked and underrated feature of having players genuinely care about each other. On the subject of caring, viewers who care about their online privacy or just want access to region locked content could probably use the help of a VPN, and no matter the device, Surfshark VPN has you covered. Appearing anywhere in the world instantaneously sure has its advantages, whether that be making yourself harder to track, confusing your assigned FBI agent, or simply breaking past pesky region locks that stop you from watching what you want. The days of not understanding the Breaking Bad memes is coming to an end. The show has been out for over a decade, it's time to come home. Just install Surfshark, set your location to anywhere in the world, and enjoy roughly 6 billion new shows and movies right at your fingertips. Signing up with the code on screen will give viewers an 83% discount, 3 months for free, and viewers who aren't 100% satisfied can back out in the first 30 days and get a full refund. Surfshark VPN, it's cheaper than the other ones.